So you want to become a day trader. No problem. I can help you out with that. So let's go. Yes, yes, yes. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today, we're going to talk about how to become a day trader, pretty much A to Z, okay, what you need. And also, I'm going to show you guys a couple of trades that I took to help you understand um, how I'm looking at the market, all right? So what is a day trader? A day trader is basically a person that comes in the market and that person is looking to capitalize on short term movements, okay? So for the most part, you're looking to hold a trade maybe for five, 10, sometimes an hour or so, but you're not really looking to hold all day. Now, there are trades where you can hold all day, but honestly, they are rare and they don't come every single day. For the most part, you pretty much want to be in and out, and we're going to talk more about that. Now, the good thing about being a day trader is if you have Wi-Fi, you can trade anywhere around the world. So a lot of times when I'm on vacation, I'm actually day trading. And honestly, if you know the market, you understand the market, you don't really need to day trade all day. You can actually day trade for the first two hours and you're done for the day and you can actually enjoy your vacation. So we're gonna talk more about that. So let's talk about the first thing you need to do when you are trying to become a day trader. The first thing you need to do is actually open up a demo account, right? And you can get that from your broker. Now, I know a lot of people that's watching me are trading different markets. Some of you guys are trading the stock market options, right? Some of you guys are trading Forex. Some of you guys are trading the futures market and some of you guys are trading uh, crypto. So when it comes to trading those platforms, your broker should have a demo account that will help you trade the market with paper money. Now, a demo account is pretty much a practice account. And that simply means that you are looking at your chart, right? And you are looking at the live market, but you are not risking live money. You are risking paper money. So your broker is gonna give you paper money, which is not real money. And that will help you understand how to get in, get out, understand all the functions and everything when you are trading. So you can actually look at the live market and practice your strategy without risking any money. And that's the good thing about day trading. Now, this demo account is very good because you need to practice your strategy because you are competing against professionals. Imagine if you never played football in your life and someone came to you and said, hey, listen, I'm going to draft you to the NFL and I'm going to give you only a week to prepare and you're going to play with professionals. Do you think you're really going to perform at a high level? And the answer is no. So you need to practice first. Same thing when it comes to trading the market, the demo allows you to practice because if you just open up a live account and go straight in the market, guess what? You're gonna lose your money because you are competing with billionaires, millionaires, math wizards, scientists, experts. We're talking about the smartest guys on the planet. So you need to practice first. Now let's talk about a couple of brokers that you can actually look into. You don't have to use them, but you can probably look into. Now, if you're trading stocks and options, you could probably look into TD Ameritrade or Interactive Brokers. If you're trading Forex, you can look into Oanda. And a lot of people like Hanko Trade for their Forex broker, even though that's unregulated. Now, when it comes to trading futures, you can look at AMP Futures or Tradovate. And those brokers will help you set up your demo account. Now, once we get that out of the way, we need a strategy to trade the market. Now, your strategy should be all about, number one, the context. We're going to talk about that later. Number two, key levels. Number three, entries. Number four, exits. And number five, risk management. And we're going to talk about all these things right now. So let's talk about context, right? The most important thing, guys, when it comes to trading the market is understanding market structure. I tell my students all the time, market structure is king because if you don't understand the direction of the market, I don't care what strategy you're using or what setup you're using, you're going to always lose because let's say, for example, the market is going up, but you see a reversal candle and you try to go short and go against the trend. Guess what? You're always going to get stopped out and lose money. So you have to understand the context. You have to understand in real time, is the market trending? Is it ranging? Is it about to break out? Is it about to reverse, right? We need to know these things because if you don't know these things, the market will trap you. I remember when I first started out, I was always obsessed with the trend. And I'm quite sure a lot of new traders are obsessed with the trend too because you hear that the trend is your friend. 
And that is true. But sometimes the trend will not be your friend because it will end. And you have to know or at least see some signs on the chart that will tell you, okay, you know what? The market looks like it's about to reverse. Now let's go to the whiteboard real quick. Now, when it comes to a trending market, you know, pretty much what you're looking for is higher highs, right? And higher lows, right? For uptrend. And another way to look at this is you can plot a either a 20 moving average on your chart or a 50 moving average on your chart, right? And those moving average will help you identify the trend right away. What I like to do, I like to actually plot a trend line, okay? At the swing lows if the market is going up and that will identify or help me identify the trend too now right here we have the 50 moving average on the chart and notice how when price goes below that 50 moving average you can say the market looks like a bearish market meaning it looks like it's going down and when the price goes above that 50 moving average we can say the market is in the uptrend because it's above that 50 moving average again you can use that or you can use a trend line now for range in markets right we're looking at highs and lows so if the market is basically going like this going sideways right it's good to look at the highs which is resistance and look at the lows which is support okay and we can look to get in at the bottom and get out the top or get in at the top and look to get out at the bottom and that's pretty much the whole concept. Now for a breakout market, you're pretty much looking for the market to basically be in some type of trend, right? And it's going to probably consolidate. And when it's consolidating, meaning going sideways, that usually means that the market is resting a little bit and it might make another move to the upside. So if we see this breakout to the upside, that's a strong possibility that the market will continue to go up. So you have to understand this when you are trading live. Now, another thing you have to understand is when the market is about to reverse. Now, there are a lot of reversal patterns out here. We're talking about double tops, head and shoulders. Right now, we're only going to talk about the head and shoulder pattern. OK, so let's say the market is going up. Right. And basically, the market makes a peak right here and goes down and makes another peak right here. The reason why they call it the head and shoulders is because we got the head right here, and we got the left shoulder right here, and we have the right shoulder right here. And this is a reversal pattern that will help you understand, you know what, the market looks weak. I don't know if I wanna continue to take longs anymore, so let me just wait until I see more confirmation. And this will help you out a lot because again, remember when I first started out, Everybody said the trend is your friend. So guess what? I ignored all the different states. I ignored when the market was reversing. I didn't care about reversal patterns. All I wanted to do was trade a trend. But when you see different type of reversal patterns, that will help you say, you know what? Mm, I don't think I should trade with the trend right now. Let me look for a little bit more confirmation. And trust me, this will help you out if you're day trading, right? So the head and shoulders is a possibility that the market will have resistance right at this left shoulder right here and drop back down okay and you know continue to go down okay so that's context now let's go to the next thing which is key levels now key levels are very important right and we're going to talk about why it's important but when it comes to my key levels i use price action i love to use price action because it's something that doesn't lag when you are using indicators a lot of indicators lag price action is basically going up with price and that's what you've seen with the candlesticks right so price action is basically the patterns that the chart makes when price goes up and down okay and we need those patterns because those patterns repeat over and over and over and that's what's going to help us create that edge that we need for us to be profitable in the market. Now, the reason why key levels are important is because you need consistency, right? In order to build consistency, you need to do something over and over and over. So let's say that the market is going up right here, right? And it's going up right here. And since you see the market is going up, you buy right here. A lot of times if you see the market going up and you buy right here, it's gonna go right back down. So that will make you lose money and you don't want to do that. So you want to have a strategy that's going to build consistency and build good habits that will help you make profits in the market. So when you take random trades like this, guess what? You're going to get random results and we don't need that. So what key levels do I use, right? There are tons of key levels you can use. I use 
supply and demand, right? And I use support and resistance. Now, supply and demand is basically aggressive selling and aggressive buying. So let's say that the market is going up right here, right? And it pulls back. We're looking for aggressive buying right here, right? And when we see this aggressive buying, for the most part, I'm looking for multiple candles in a row, right? A lot of times the market will move so fast, it has to pull back to these key areas right here, okay? And a lot of times it will come back to collect some more orders. And when they collect more orders, the market usually goes up depending on if you see, you know, a decent buying at that zone. Now, this is called demand, right? And when the market is going down, it's called supply, right? And we're looking for the market to come back to this aggressive move. So it started to move right here. We're looking for it to come back and looking for some type of reaction. Now, let's talk about support and resistance. Support and resistance, basically, we're looking for the market to come to a certain level and we're looking for the market to react to that level. So let me show you guys what I mean. So there's pretty much two types of support and resistance. We have the swing lows. So the market's going up right here right so we have swing lows right here okay so let's say the market comes back to the swing low right here right it's a possibility that buyers might come at this level right to bring back up the market so you can use a single swing low or a single swing high for support and resistance another way you can use support and resistance is if you see the market rejecting a level more than once so Right here, let's say we have this, boom, the market come here, it rejects this level again, boom, comes here, it rejects this level again, boom. So we have right here resistance because it can't go above. And then below here, we have support, okay, because it's supporting that price. So we use these levels while we are day trading because it helps us build an edge. And that's what we need for us to actually make money in the market. Now, I actually do have a supply and demand indicator for people that don't understand it. At first, that supply and demand indicator could help you get your feet wet. You don't need it. You don't need to rely on it. I always tell people, learn price action because it will help you out tremendously when you're trading. But if you want something that will help you or assist you in the beginning, this indicator will help you. And the reason why I love this indicator is because it's based on price action. Okay, Usually... Most indicators are lagging, you know, like the RSI. Nothing wrong with the RSI. You can still use it, but it's still lagging, okay? But the indicator I'm about to show you guys, it is dealing with strictly price action. So you see the D, which stands for demand, right? Now, notice how we have multiple candles in a row. That's what we're looking for when we're looking for supply and demand. And the reason why we're doing that, guys, when we're looking for supply and demand is because we're looking for big players, okay? Big players to actually come in the market and push up the market. And that will help us or guide us or let us know, okay, there's a possibility that the market will continue to go in that direction if it pulls back to that key area. Because guess what? In order for the market to go up that much, you need a lot of money. And we, the retail traders, okay, we can't push up the market. I don't care how much money you have, you cannot push up the market. When we see that, we can say, all right, big players are in the market. If it comes back to this level, then it's a strong possibility if we see a decent reaction, it will continue to go up in that direction. So right here, we have a pullback to this demand level right here. Boom. And the market went up. You could have scalped this real quick. And then notice how we have another demand right here. Okay. And the market pulled back to this demand level. And then it went up. And actually, we have another one right here. Okay. The market uh, created this demand level right here, went, went into this demand level, and then pushed back up. Now, this is a private indicator and it comes with my trading program for free. So that will help you get your feet wet. Now, again, I told you guys you do not need to rely on indicators. Price action is where it's at, but I know some of you guys need to get your feet wet. Let me show you guys another example. Now, this is supply. Okay. Remember, we talked about demand, which is an up move, supply is a down move. So, when it comes to day trading, you can actually trade up moves and down moves. You can make profits as the market is going down and you can make profit if the market is going up. So the market is going down, right? Now notice how we have this yellow candle. Pretty much the yellow candle is when the indicator is showing us aggressive selling, that is where the market started the whole move, okay? That's where it started the aggressive selling. So we have that aggressive selling right here. We can draw our zone right here. Just notice how the market came back to that aggressive selling. That's what we want. We want the market to come back and boom, it reacted to that 
aggressive selling and it went down now this indicator comes with short confirmations so notice how it gives you short confirmations right here at that zone now these short and buy confirmations are only good at key levels you do not want to take it anywhere when it's not at a key level that's what i told you guys before when it comes to day trading or trading in general you only want to stick to key levels okay now you came to this key right here you got a short confirmation now notice how it went down created supply right here came back boom this short confirmation right here and it went down so this is a good example of supply and demand now let me show you guys a nice example of support and resistance okay guys so here's a resistance trade the market is going down it came back to this key level remember we need key levels resistance right here and the market sold off at resistance we're going to talk about entries later and we're going to talk about exits later but i just want to show you guys this quick examples of resistance and support so let's go to a support example so right here guys we have a support example right here the market is holding that support level and it bounced off of this support and you're looking for profits right okay so now let's talk about entries how to get in the market so let's go now if you know me by now you know i like to keep things as simple as possible so we're going to talk about a simple way to get in the market so we could look at a rejection bar right here to the left or a nice bullish bar right here okay and this is when the market is going up Again, remember, I told you guys before, we can actually make profits when the market is going down too. So we're looking for a nice rejection bar if the market is going down or a nice bearish bar if the market is going down, okay? So let me show you guys some examples on the chart. And I'm gonna show you guys a trade that I took today using one of these candlesticks. So right here, guys, we have support, okay? When the market breaks that resistance, that resistance actually turns into support now, okay? So we have support. Let's zoom in real quick. Notice how... The market pulled back to this support right here and we have a nice what rejection bar okay i actually took this trade too and how you want to get in is basically you want to wait for the bar to close and the next bar which is this bar right here guys it has to go above that candlestick that candlestick high the wick so once it goes above that candlestick that's when you get in all right we're going to talk about exits later on okay so when we get in we have to set our stop loss so where do we want to set our stop loss and first what is a stop loss okay a stop loss is basically something that's going to protect you from losing a lot of money okay so for example let's say you want to only risk ten dollars on this trade you can only risk ten dollars on this trade or let's say you only want to risk one hundred dollars on this trade guess what you can risk one hundred dollars if you use a stop loss now if it comes to your stop loss okay let's say price comes back down right and hit your stop loss which is below right here then that's when you actually lose out now when it comes to trading trading is all about probabilities it's all about understanding that you will not win every single trade you have to understand that so for example let's say you take 10 trades in a row you might win six trades out of 10 so you have to understand you will lose some trades but as long as you have an edge in the market and as long as you can actually have something that will give you a decent risk to reward when it comes to your risk management you can actually grow your day trading account that way okay we're going to talk about that later so this is a nice example of a rejection bar so let's go to another example okay so right here we have a range of market right the market's not going no it's go up and down up and down so we have support right here right it came to support right here it bounced up boom gave us this nice demand level now when it comes to key level i forgot to mention this when we were talking about key levels another thing you can do with key levels is you can combine them with other key levels okay so another key level could be trend lines moving averages or support and resistance right so right here we have support combined with demand so the market shot up right here created demand gave you this nice bullish bar right here okay and after that it created another demand right here it pulled back and gave you another bullish bar right here and as soon as you see this bullish bar wait for it to close wait for the next bar to actually go above that and boom okay we're going to get in the market now we're going to talk about exits okay so when it comes to exits guys so many ways you can exit the market okay but we're going to keep it as simple as possible you can go for a fixed two to one when you are day trading the market okay so that basically means that let's say you're risking 100 dollars you're looking to make 200 dollars 
The reason why you want to do something like this is because let's say, for example, your strategy this week gave you a 50% win rate. With a 50% win rate, you can still make money because every trade that you take is actually two times the risk. So let's say you lose five trades and you win five trades. So those losers will add up to $500 and the winners will add up to $1,000. So you basically have your winners, which is 1,000 and you subtract that with the losers, which is 500 and that will leave you $500 in profit. And that's how you stay in the game, okay? You definitely want to have your winners bigger than your losers. Now, there are times when you can actually make more money than that, where you have your winners rot even more but in the beginning when it comes to day trading you need to keep things as simple as possible especially if you are a beginner because a lot of things can confuse you now when you get a little bit more advanced okay you can look at the market and look at the trade and say okay this is only going to be a scalp trade i'm gonna scalp it because i don't like how the market is looking okay so usually when i go for a quick scalps it's usually either i'm late in the trend or the overall market is slow that day okay but let's say that the market is looking like it's breaking out, it's trying to make new highs. Maybe you want to hold a little bit more and you can have a strategy where, okay, the market is breaking out, it's making new highs, I'm gonna hold a little bit longer. So that's when you can actually have more advanced strategies where you are not fixed, right? Your strategy is not fixed. You have a deeper understanding and understanding what the market is doing in real time and you can actually hold for bigger targets. But in the beginning, I usually tell people, listen, let's keep it simple. A fixed two to one will help you out. So now let's talk about risk management. So when we take a trade, guys, right, while we're in a trade, we have to know beforehand how much we want to risk on that trade, okay? And when you're first starting out, okay, it's best to risk the same amount per trade. So let's say that you take, I don't know, five trades during the week. Every single trade, you have to risk the same amount. So let's say you want to risk $20 on that trade or every single trade. Guess what? Monday got to be $20. Tuesday got to be $20. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it has to be $20, okay? Now, there are some advanced strategies where you could risk more on certain trades, right? So this is more for experienced traders that have stats to back up why they are risking more some trades i risk a little bit more because i know that this trade might work out better than other trades okay but this comes with experience so when you first start off you really don't want to do that you really want to just have a fixed risk per trade now a lot of people will say risk one percent of your account i don't really follow that risk management strategy what i like to tell people is listen man risk as low as possible okay because think about it let's say for example i don't know you're blessed with a lot of money and you put 100k in your trading account one percent is one thousand dollars now if you're new to the market and you lose one thousand dollars i don't care how much money you have that's going to affect your day trading because you're not used to losing you know one thousand dollars that quick so the best thing to do is get your feet wet of course you want to go on demo first then when you go to live all right you want to risk as low as possible. So if you can risk $20 per trade or $30 per trade, in my opinion, it's best to do that because that will help you stay in the game longer and it will help you in general because when you first trade live, guess what? You're gonna make mistakes. So why would you want to lose big money when you are trading live and you know you're gonna make mistakes? So the second thing you need to do is you need to have a daily loss limit. So let's say, for example, you risk $100 per trade. Now, if you wanna give yourself four chances for that day, all right, four chances equals $400. So when you are down $400 for that day, you have to stop. And the reason why is because this will protect your capital. Because if you don't have that in place and you keep trading and trading and trading, you could dig yourself in a big hole and you don't want that. So you need to have a daily loss limit. If it's $60, if it's $400, I don't care what it is, have a max loss for the day. If you hit that max loss, boom, you're done for the day and you wait for the next day, right? Now, what time frame do you want to use when you are day trading the market? I personally like to use the five minute chart. Trust me, I use the 30 second chart. I used the 10 second chart before. I even try to use the five second chart before. I tried a lot of different time frames. okay? The five minute to me, is the sweet spot i see a lot of new traders want to go to the one minute chart and they're trying to look at one minute candlesticks 
guys, you can't do that. Unless you're just buying a level and you're using that level as risk, then you could probably use the one minute chart. But if you're using a candlestick to actually get in the market, then one minute candlesticks is not the way to go. Okay, to me, the five minute chart is a good place to start. Trust me on this one. Now, let's talk about what time to trade because you need a specific time to trade. This is very important. You can't just randomly go in the market and say, oh, let me just take a trade. No, there's certain times during the day you need to be at your desk because those are the times where you probably are going to find better opportunities. Okay, so if you're trading Forex, 3 a.m., Okay, Eastern Time, which is the London session, is a great time to trade. In New York session, that's 8 a.m. Eastern Time, that's a good time to trade. Why? Is because that's when the volume comes in the market. You need to trade the market when the volume comes in because we are day traders and we need the market to move, right? We need the market to move up and down. And that's how we make our profits. Now, if you're trading stocks, indices, options, you're going to trade at 930 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. That's what I'm looking at pretty much for the most part. And I'm looking for the market to open around that time. And I'm looking for opportunities. So let's put all this together. Let's look at a quick example of my trade that I took today. Okay. So this is what I saw today. Okay. We had a head right here. We had a left shoulder right here and we had the right shoulder right here. Remember I told you guys before, when it comes to the market, you can't just look at the market as a trending market and that's it. You have to understand reversals and the other different states we discussed earlier, okay? So what I saw today was a nice head and shoulders pattern, okay? So when I saw that, I was looking at the market when it hit this um, left shoulder resistance. Notice how we had a nice, let me zoom in for you guys so you can see, okay? Notice how we had a nice rejection bar right here. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit more. Right here, nice rejection bar. Right at that left shoulder resistance. I got in, okay, and I actually got out right at support, okay? And if you look to the left, I'm up $959 for the day. Now, this is a good example of looking at the market, understanding the context, understanding what the market is doing in real time, looking at a key level and looking at a candlestick to get in the market and boom you take the trade and you look to exit okay now the reason why i exit at that support level is because overall the head and shoulders is a reversal pattern so for the most part i believe that it should at least hit this nice support level right here okay now let's talk about a couple of more things that will help you with your day trading before we wrap this up first thing is back testing guys you have to back test so once you create your strategy you have to go back on the chart and look at the chart and look at key levels and look how price reacted to those key levels. And you look if that was a loser, winner, how far the winner went, you know, um, how far you can hold that winner, whatever the case is, you have to back test because when you back test, guess what? That's going to help you with your confidence, right? You're going to see, wow, this strategy is working. So when I do trade this strategy live, even though I might be nervous, I know that this strategy works, right? And that's what you need. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is when you are consistent and you, you know, start to build up your trading account, you're going to see your profits grow, right? And naturally, you want to increase your size, right? So you can make extra money. And that is a good thing. Now, when it comes to that, though, guys, please do not try to increase your size a lot, all right? So let's say, for example, you're risking $100. You don't want to go to $100 all the way to $500. No, increase it little by little so maybe instead of 100 dollars, maybe you want to increase it to 120 dollars, right and then maybe 150 dollars, little by little because i'm telling you right now if you increase it a lot man when those losers come because remember what i said before every trade is not going to be a winner but we can still win if we have an edge and if our winners is bigger than our losers yes but we are going to have losers so we don't want our losers to affect us so if you are not used to losing 500 dollars and let's say for example you lose two trades in a row man that's really going to get to you so you don't want to go up that fast you want to go up little by little now the next thing you want to talk about is you have to keep a journal you have to journal your trades and take screenshots 
And the reason why is because you want to basically track everything. And I talk about this in my trading psychology video. Please check that out. But you want to you know, journal everything. You want to journal your behavior. You want to, you know, see if, um, you know, what's working, what's not working. And you want to actually look at your trades because once you see, wow, every time I take this trade, I'm winning nine out of 10. And the only way to know that guys, if you take notes, okay, let me ask you this. How can you actually improve if you don't know the exact problem? It's impossible. So in order to know the exact problem, you have to take notes. So you can say, oh yeah, this is the reason why I'm losing right here. Trust me guys, that helped me out a lot in my day trading career. And I actually took my day trading career to a next level because I knew, okay, this wasn't working. I had to remove that from my strategy. So guys and girls, please take notes, right? And the last thing I have to say is keep things as simple as possible. Please don't try to complicate things, guys. Keep it as simple as possible. And honestly, I want you guys to grow. Good luck with the day trading journey and let's do it. Let's prove all the haters wrong because trust me, you're gonna have haters, it's just what it is. Let's prove them wrong, keep at it, and don't give up. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. If you want to learn more and go deeper with this day trading career, I do have a trading program. Check that below in the description. Actually, the indicator comes with it for free. And I have a black history sale going on, so make sure you take advantage of that before that ends. If you have any questions, comment below because I try to answer all your guys' questions. Thanks a lot for your time, and please, have a great day.